It's time to talk about Argyle. Alan, tell us the story of <laughs> Argyle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Directed by Matthew Vaughn, uh, stars Bryce Dallas Howard as this uh, espionage novelist who uh, happens to be somewhat of a predictor of real world events. And so while she is writing a book about uh, secret agent Argyle, uh, it, it seems like that everything she's written about him has actually happened uh, in, in the world of geopolitics. And um, so now uh, the, the powers that be are after her because she's written her fifth book and uh, it's hitting too close to home and they and she hasn't completed the ending yet because of writer's block. And uh, so the 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 uh, the dark the uh, was it dark web or dark uh, dark world is going after her. Uh, led by um, led by uh, da, 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 Brian Cranston, uh, and her only help is uh, rogue agent Aiden Wild, played by Sam Rockwell, and uh, and so now she's on the run, and they're trying to figure out how to take down the uh, district or whatever they call it, the directorate, and so that's uh, there we go, and um, and her story is told. Uh, through flashbacks or, or through uh, montages featuring Henry Cavill and John Cena, uh, John Cena who barely appears in the movie. Well, they're not; those aren't flashbacks. What they are is so Ellie Conway is the author, mm -hmm. played by Bryce Dallas Howard. She's written a series of books called Argyle. She's on the fifth book. She has obsessed fans. You see her in the opening of the film doing like this, like read of the story, and and she's working on the next chapter the next book she's almost done with it and kind of has a non-ending a cliffhanger and her mom is very insistent her mother played by Catherine O'Hara Catherine O'Hara the great Catherine O'Hara the great Catherine O'Hara is so good um she's like encouraging her you got to write that ending it's a cop out you got to one last chapter how does it end how does it end and so Ellie Conway is taking the train cuz she's afraid to fly uh to visit uh her mom and she's on the train and is attacked by all these people sam rockwell shows up he's this super spy who basically saves her life right along with her cat her cat whose name uh is yeah, I know. alfie alfie right and that name matters all right um so, but the thing is, is so, so what you're seeing is they're not flashbacks. It's her, in her head, her story. She has J John Cena plays this character and Argyle in her book is played by Henry Cavill. So when you go in her head, she sees her lead character. The lead character kind of inspires her. So she'll be looking in the mirror at herself and then she sees Henry Cavill comes up and he's dashing. He's cool. Sam Rockwell is the opposite of that. He's sort of a schlub. He looks sort of homeless at the beginning. He, um, you know, he, he's, he's, he's not as cool and smooth. Whereas Argyle has like the perfectly coiffed hair. He's got like this blazer. He's James, Bondian, yeah. he's James Bond, basically. He is the perfect super spy. And Sam Rockwell is like more like a spy in real life. So but you, you have these two parallel stories, her fictional right, right. account of the world and the real world. And then if you watch the trailer, there's this great buildup to who in the world is actually Agent Argyle. Right, right. Yeah, that so, trailer just really um, builds to that point. Now, we're going to do two reviews of this movie. One will be non-spoiler, and then we're going to do spoiler. Because in order to talk about what I think are a lot of the flaws in the film, we have to get to the spoilers. But... The biggest flaw is a couple couple things. Let me go through. Um, let me go through some some of the things I liked. Okay, I like Bryce Dallas Howard as this character. I just like Bryce Dallas Howard. She's a curvy girl. It's got a, a little curviness to her. She has almost a Gina Carano like you know like like uh, frame. I mean this all as a positive. So I've always liked like look if you're a fan of Betty Page, you know who I'm talking about. Bryce Dallas Howard should she choose to be a cheesecake pinup model could be a Betty page type. So I have always liked her. Sam Rockwell, one of my favorite actors. Awesome. Who doesn't love Henry Cavill? Problem is this movie is a huge bait and switch by the posters. 
it looks like Henry Cavill is the lead in this movie. Henry Cavill is not the lead in this movie. He is in the movie for about 10 minutes. Big bait and switch on what the movie is. When we get to the spoiler, it gets even worse. The spoilers. It'll get worse. Uh, I mean, no, wait, like, he's, he's kind of peppered throughout the whole movie, though. He's peppered through the movie, but he's technically, if you added up the screen time, probably 10 to 15 minutes tops. In any case, um, so I like I like the actors. I like the cast. The cat's fine. Computer and there you go. Yeah. And Brian Branson's fine. No, here's the here's the thing. There's so much digital work in this movie. Mm -hmm. it, it's ridiculous. There are ridiculous action sequences that are so stupid. And we're going to get to them in the spoiler section that you are just going to like, how do you take this movie seriously? One, I don't even know if there was a real cat in this movie, Alfie. Like, yeah, it feels like that cat might have been real in a few shots. It's a digital cat for most of the movie. I mean, and it's stupid. Now they play it off, right? So am I supposed to take this stuff seriously? Or is this a laugh out loud comedy that it's just dumb? Now, if See, you well, here, here, let's, I want to talk about this. For no, a let me finish one last oh, yeah, point. Ahead. One last point. If you turn your brain off and don't take this movie seriously, I can see how some people could have a good time. It just got so ridiculous. I couldn't take the film seriously. We're going to get to some of it. And the digital work, this movie was shot over COVID. It was shot in 2021 mm -hmm. is when this movie was shot. And it looks like there's so much digital enhancement, not just, not just the cat. Look at Bryce Dallas Howard's cleavage in the third act of the film. She wears a dress and combat boots and it's a very low cut dress and you're looking at her boobs and I'm looking at her boobs, which caught my attention because why wouldn't they? I love breasts. Women look at other women's breasts. Gay men love breasts. One thing that could unite the world is breasts and cleavage. I just, I really believe that. I truly believe in breasts. But I'm looking at Bryce Dallas Howard's breasts in Argyle, and it looks like they look digital. Not like she has fake breasts, but that the, the frame that's here around her dress where her cleavage is looks fake because they don't move at all. And... They are, there's like this beige shading, like either it was too much makeup or whatever, but it just looks fake. Digital boobs, everyone, digital tits. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but it looked fake. And I, the second time I watched it, I'm like, there's definitely some weird, like they put a green screen here to put in fake boobs. Am I wrong? Could someone on the team for Argyle who worked on the digital effects. We need to get a hold of Mr. Skin and ask him. Mr. Skin. Re I have your email. You have my email. I might email you. Are the breasts, Bryce Dallas Howard's breasts, in Argyle fake? So the movie is so much digital enhancement. And a lot of the action scenes, too, which just come off so fake. It's yeah. ridiculous. This is the bait. This is this movie should just be called Bait and Switch. Yeah. It is, it is. Well, let me yeah. so 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 there's that. And we're gonna get into it more. I I, I it really bugged me. Also, two hour twenty minute running. Oh, yeah, that was long. God, like okay. And, and also, once you get to this big twist in the middle of the movie, it's so ridiculous. There are four other twists after that where you're like, "Wait, what?" So there's so many twists. You're like, "This does this movie doesn't even take itself seriously." I was like, "Now I'll say this: I went to see this with a group of not a joke, twenty people. Our little movie meetup group at the AMC Burbank sixteen has grown." And I'll say about 15 of the people did not like this movie at all. And there were five people that just said, thought it was fun, really enjoyed it, had a good time. Alan, what are your thoughts on Argyle? And okay, no, no let's spoilers. Break it, let's no break spoilers, it down. No spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, we'll break yeah. it up to let's just break it down. Um, okay. okay. So, so the CG, uh, part of my issue was, uh, you know, it's Matthew Vaughn. Uh, there, the CG, I, I don't know why it works in Kingsman and didn't work in this movie. Mm. Uh, and and I think part of it is is that, you know, she's this author. Uh, she tells this story, and I found the 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 depiction of that story to be so over the top that it just felt comical. Um, and it was just, you know, it had that Matthew Vaughn style to it. But I think it just went 
too far and it just didn't look real. And I get it. It's the fictionalized story. And, and while watching it, I, I kept thinking, how good is this writer really? I mean, the, the character, uh, the, the story she's telling about uh, espionage and intrigue is is really low quality and low key. Uh, you know, it's like uh, American fiction, you know, where, where you know, they're talking about the black experience and how it goes just too far and exploitative. Um, this one felt the same way. And I kept thinking to myself, uh, this this character who they're building up as the greatest spy writer in the world is actually telling a really bad spy story. And that that was the, the big issue that I ran into early on in this film. Um, I will say, though, um, once once the story once we got into Ellie's story and it moved along, um, I was I was like, OK, I, I'm not hating this movie. Uh, I'm kind of having a good time. And, and let me preface that by saying, uh, before the movie started, I was on Twitter and I saw Gary and Quarter Black Garrett's reviews. And I'm seeing all these people chiming in saying, this is the worst movie ever. And as, as we're moving into the second and uh, first and second act, I'm like, um, this is not as bad as, as, I, as I feel everyone's saying it is. And then we got to the third act and, and there's a moment uh, let, let's say no. There's a, yeah, there's two there's things. A moment, there's, yeah, there's I'll the middle there's of the a moment, moment that that occurs far into the third act to where it was like, oh, I'm I'm out of this movie. This movie is done for me, and uh, and it just it was so over the top, so stupid, uh, so unlike Matthew Vaughn at this point that uh, that I now realize why everyone's saying this is such a bad, horrible movie. So, yeah. uh, and my daughter, my daughter, uh, checked out even earlier than I did. Okay. So your daughter. Okay. So, yeah. um, she's, she's, she's now using the phrases of, uh, I can't get my time back. <laughs> and, uh, oh no. Well, yeah. The other thing is that the action, I feel like there's this style of action movie. That's like slap, 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 Ooh, uh -huh. grab pen, do this slap, 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 slap. I'm going to block you and then i'm gonna slap and this and there's a pen that's a knife and i'm gonna grab that and, and it just it's tired it's gotten tired even the monkey man trailer had some of that and i'm like mm -hmm. where did this style of fighting in movies just become there's a sameness to it where we've seen it so often it doesn't feel original it feels like oh mm -hmm. i've seen this before in other movies and it's becoming like a fight style amongst stuntmen and you know it looks cool but it's Sort of like, and the point, where are we going with this? Um, yeah, let, just let me, let me just say this. Let, let yeah. me just say this. Um, without getting the spoilers, I felt like if they had kept the third act relatively grounded, uh, I probably would have walked out liking the movie. Well, here's the thing. Okay. I can't, we can't talk about spoilers Yeah, we can't talk yet. about it. But that's, we are going to tell you that's, that's the, the movie had the potential to be good, um, but it was not good. This, and, the, the, it, it, because of the cast and, and like i say i like bryce dallas howard yeah catherine sam rockwell, sam, catherine Hara, i've always loved sam rockwell mm -hmm. all the way from galaxy quest right like sam yeah. rockwell is awesome um then you've got you know you've got john cena he's barely he's barely in it but okay barely, but but that's fine brian cranston and you know what it worked it was like oh i'm sort of like for the first maybe third of the movie it's like yeah i know this is dumb but ultimately here's where what the movie is it's a chick flick this mm -hmm. isn't a movie this isn't a, if you like james bond you will hate this and yeah. what i mean james bond real james bond okay or if you like real spy stuff you're gonna hate this this is a chick flick because it's from her point of view as a writer who love who who has this sort of fantasy spy in her head who's the perfect spy and Henry Cavill is effectively an even more suave James Bond. And that was working and that was fun. But there's a moment in the middle of the movie. And then there are several twists that happen even after that moment that like, I, I feel like the audience could only take like one twist if they just did one twist. But when you pile four other twists on it, it's so, and then, and then turnabouts, it just gets it just gets dumb. Um, we're going to do a separate spoiler review of Argyle. But before we get to that, Alan, what is your number rating? I'm I'm giving Argyle a four out of ten. Yeah, I gave it a four. A four. Okay, yeah. 
four out of 10 seems reasonable. And I can see how you can like it. Mm -hmm. It's not for me. So yeah, I, I think my, my general impression throughout the parts I did like was that this is not as bad as people are making it out to be. And then it gets bad <laughs> the way people are making it out to be in the middle. It gets bad. Um, well, no, I'm playing the end uh, to me. It was the ending that the third act that that was bad. Oh my God, Alan, we agreed. It's like, I, yeah, it's I like, know. what's the number in my head? What's the number in my head, Alan? It's a four. Oh, mine's a four <laughs> too. So there you go. My All child right. gave it a two. That's how much. <laughs>